Algebra 1 EOC Review. This video will take you through some notes and sample problems for linear equations and inequality problems that you might see on the Algebra 1 end of course assessment. You need to have your notes packet and then also your Algebra 1 EOC pretest. We will be going back and forth between these two documents. The first topic we'll look at is rewriting a formula for a chosen variable. Remember, you're going to locate the chosen variable in the formula that you are solving for. You're going to undo the math that's being done to the variable, starting with the operation furthest away from the variable. Another way to think about undoing the math is PEMDAS backwards. Yes, that's right, sad math. So undo the subtraction or addition first, then multiplication or division next, then exponents and finally parentheses. Now go to your Algebra 1 EOC pretest packet, turn to number five and work number five. Try it on your own and then come back to the video for some help going through it. So on number five, we have the formula for the area of a trapezoid. Area is one half the base one plus the base two times the height. We are solving for B1. So you need to write the equation and then underline the variable that you are solving for. That will help you stay focused. Look at the math that is happening to base 1. It is being added inside the parentheses to base 2, and on the outside, we've got 2 multiplication, 1 half and h. So we're going to start with undoing the multiplying by a half. So to undo that, you can multiply both sides by the denominator by 2 and then rewrite the formula. So now we just need to undo the multiplication by h, or the height. So to undo multiplication, we're gonna divide both sides by the height. Rewrite the formula, so on the left you'll have two times the area divided by the height equals the first base plus the second base. Notice I have base one underlined because I'm keeping my focus on that. Next, I need to undo that addition, so I'm going to subtract and rewrite my formula. So my formula rewritten for base 1 will equal 2 times the area divided by the height minus um, base 2. So now I'm going to go and match that with my answer choices. And if I look through all of them, I can see that choice B is going to be the one that I want. Now go back to your notes packet and let's solve A together. So we're gonna solve the formula for the perimeter of a rectangle um, for its width. And so you want to underline the variable that you are solving for. Look at the math that's being done. So multiplication of two and the addition of two times the length. So remember sad MEP. We will undo the addition first. So subtract two times the length from both sides and rewrite your formula. So we'll have two times the width equals the perimeter times minus two times the length. That's all we can do. I'm gonna underline my width again so I can keep focused on what I'm solving for. I wanna divide away the two since it's multiplying and then I'm simply going to rewrite again. So width equals the perimeter minus two times the length divided by two. I've done it. Now let's look at B. This problem, we're going to solve the formula for the volume of a cone for height. So I'm going to underline <clears throat> that variable so I can stay focused. I notice what the math that's being done to height. It's being multiplied by one-third by pi and by the radius squared. So I'm going to start by undoing the multiplication times one-third by multiplying by the denominator, three, on both sides. I'm going to rewrite my formula. So three times the volume equals pi times the radius squared divided by the height. I'm focusing on the height. So now I need to divide away both pi and r squared. I can do that in one step, and then I will rewrite my formula. So height will equal three times the volume divided by pi r squared. Now let's move to a different topic with linear equations, how to write an equation of a line. So remember, the two things you need to know to write an equation of a line are the slope, which we denote with m, and the y-intercept, which we denote with the letter b. So if you don't know the slope, you can figure it using two points. 
<clears throat> you will just designate which point is point one and which one is point two. Notice I have written x1 and y1, x2, y2. The little sub numbers down below don't do anything mathematical, they just name those points. And so remember the formula is take y2 and subtract the other y value divided by the difference in the x's. If you're given a graph of a line, what you want to do is just locate the y-intercept, the b value. So see how I've circled it there. And then from that point, find another clear point and count the slope. How many up or down? So up will be, that means rise um, or fall, and then run, how many over? So notice from one point to the next, I go up four, so my slope is positive four, and to the right one, over positive one. Now I can write the equation of my line in slope-intercept form. y equals mx plus b, or y equals 4x minus 3. Move over to your um, pretest packet and turn to number 14, and let's work this problem. So this pretest packet are questions that the state has given us um, that were probably on an EOC in the past. Uh, so these questions that we're working will be a lot like the ones that you will encounter on the Algebra 1 and the course assessment. So we see a graph of a linear equation. We're asked to write the equation in the box. <clears throat> so we're going to use the form y equals mx plus b and find the y-intercept and the slope. So we'll start by just locating it on the graph. I see that it's crossing the y-axis at positive 5. So that is my b value in the equation. From that point, I locate another clear point on my line, and then I count. So I have to move 2 down to get across from that point, and then 3 to the right. So my slope is negative 2 over positive 3. And now I can write the equation of the line in slope-intercept form. All right, move back to your notes packet, and let's work C and D together. So we need to write the equation of the line that passes through these two points. So we need to start from scratch by finding the slope. So we're going to designate <clears throat> point 1 and point 2. And just usually the first pair that I see is pair 1, and the second pair is pair 2. Then we will plug those values into our slope formula. So we've got y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1, and then you reduce the fraction. It is okay to keep slope in fraction form. Now we're going to find the b value using slope intercept. So we'll plug in a point x and y, and I just use my first one, and then my slope, which is 1 half. We will do the math, so a half times 4 is 2. And then we need to subtract 2 from both sides. So now we know our y-intercept. The last step is simple. You plug those values in into slope-intercept form to write the equation of the line. y equals 1 half x plus 3. Let's try this again on d. So our two points are negative 6, 7 and negative 9, 8. So let's just designate them point 1 and point 2. I recommend writing that over the points because that will help you with the formula plug-in, and you will be able to see this formula as you're taking the test. So we'll subtract y2 minus y1, x2 over x, sorry, x2 minus x1, and our slope is negative one-third, and it's okay to have a negative slope. Now to find our b value, we'll just take the first point that we see and plug in seven for y, negative one-third for our slope, and negative six for our x value, and then solve for b. So b in this case is positive 5. So the slope of this line is negative 1 third x plus 5. Our next review topic is how to graph a linear inequality. This is when we have a greater than or less than sign. <clears throat> and so remember, we always want to re rewrite them into y equals mx plus form. So we're going to solve for y first. Then to graph, you're going to look at your inequality. If you just have less than or greater than, no equal sign, then or equal to mark, you're going to use a dashed line like in the example. If you do have an equal to mark, then you will use a solid line like in the example. 
if your inequality is saying greater than, as you look at it left to right, you're going to shade above the line or the y-intercept, like I've indicated there. And if your inequality says less than or less than or equal to, you will shade below the line or you can think of it as just below the y-intercept on that side of the line. You can also just test a point. So take an x and a, a y point and plug it into your inequality and see if it makes the statement true. If it does, you shade on that side of the line. If it doesn't, you shade on the other side. So go to number 18 in your pretest packet and let's look at this problem. So Riley needs to save $300 for a computer. She gets an allowance of $10 a week and has already saved $75. So I recommend underlining or circling or boxing in the numbers that you are given and the phrases that go with them in this word problem. So we need to figure out how many weeks X, so that's our unknown, until Riley will have enough money to buy the computer. So we have been given a, situ a number situation. So it says 300, which is what Riley needs. And then we're going to fill in the, the sign. And on the right side of the sign we'll fill in is an expression for the money that Riley has. So her needs need to be, we just look, do they need to be greater than? Oh no, Riley needs to have more than what she needs. So her needs need to be less than. So we will eliminate that first choice and go with the second one. Now you may say, well, why can't they just equal it? But we want all the possible, so it would be okay if Riley's money was more than her needs or her needs were less than the money that she had. Now to solve this, you're going to write it and solve it like an equation, although if you divide or multiply by a negative, you'll have to switch the inequality sign. But in this case, we'll just be subtracting 75 from each side and then dividing by positive 10. Now let's turn that inequality around so we can see what it is saying. It is saying x needs to be greater than 22 and a half weeks. Um, I'm, yes, and so x, our number of weeks need to be more than 22 and a half. So the one answer that makes that statement true is choice D. Now finally, go to number 20 in your pretest packet. So we have an equation in function form f of x equals negative 3 halves x plus 120. The domain of the function um, of f is in between and including 0 and 60. That's what that inequality is telling us. Remember, do domain means our x values. So let's just take that function and first of all, plug in 0. So we're putting 0 in for x. We do the math and that gives us 120. Now let's plug in our ending amount for the domain, 60. We'll do the math, we get negative 90 plus 120 or 30. So that means we have two points in this situation. When x is zero, y is 120. And when x is 60, y is 30. So now we need to graph this and I look at my graph space. You can, on this EOC test, on a computer, you will create a graph. So I need to figure out my x-axis, my scale. So I need to go from 0 to 60. I look at how many marks I have. I decide I want to go by 5s. My y values need to go up to 120. It won't work for me to go by 5s so because I don't have enough graph space, so I'm going to go by 10s. It's okay to have your scale be different. You just need to label. So notice I have done that, and I've decided to make it an L-shaped graph where I have no negative, and that is fine. I just need to label. So then I'm going to plot my two points. <clears throat> so I have my point at 0, 120, and then at 60, 30, and I draw my line. Now, I have included my um, scale for my axes, but I need to make sure that I label my scale, or sorry, my axes as well. So I need to label that x and y. And when you're on the EOC and completing that test, you'll need to do the same as well. So make yourself even scale, label it on your graph along with your x and y. All right, that concludes our review on the linear equations and inequalities. You can always ask your teacher for more review problems 
or you can Google any of these topics to get some extra practice.